questions on pulmonary edema. Emily de los Santos asked us to go over the pathophysiology and treatment of pulmonary edema. It is a huge category caused by lots of different things, but ultimately what ends up happening is that there is increased fluid in the alveoli. There is a type of pulmonary edema in neonates called TTN, or transient tachypnea of the newborn, which really is just retention of the fetal lung fluid. This type of pulmonary edema doesn't exist in any other age group. I'm not going to talk about it more, but go look at the video on TTN. But just so that you understand, the lungs are very much like a sponge. So if they get wet, then they aren't able to expand as well, and you end up with having difficulties with oxygenation and ventilation. So overall, pulmonary edema is not good. Well, there are three categories that cause pulmonary edema. The first one is when there is too much blood or fluid going to the lungs. So that increased pressure is kind of all forced into the capillaries at the same time, causing some level of leakage. The second cause is when the capillaries themselves become really leaky, and so any fluid that's in the capillaries could kind of just seep into the alveoli. And then the third cause of pulmonary edema is when there's some sort of obstruction of the blood leaving the lungs. So that obviously will allow the pressure to build up in the lungs and also kind of leak out into the alveoli. Okay, so let's go over some examples of each category. The first one, when you have too much blood going to the lungs, can be caused by any sort of fluid overload. Whether you've given way too many fluids to the baby or the baby's just stopped peeing for whatever reason and there's just build up of fluid in all the blood vessels or it could be caused by some sort of left to right shunting at the level of the heart. So either an ASD or a VSD or a PDA, where the blood is taking a shortcut away from the body and to the lungs through the septal defects or through the doctors. Obviously this will end up with increased blood and increased fluid in the capillaries of the lungs and then leakage into the alveoli, making the lungs wet. So examples of the second category where you end up with increased leakage at the level of the capillaries is caused by a whole bunch of things, anything that increases the whole inflammatory cascade in the baby. So sepsis, hypoxemia, for example, if you have HIE or perinatal depression, even hyperoxia. So if the baby's exposed to a lot of oxygen for a long period of time, that in itself can increase the permeability of the vessels. Also, just any really bad lung disease, so RDS in itself, can cause increased permeability of those vessels. And then the third category is some sort of obstruction of the blood leaving the lungs and going to the heart. In adults, pulmonary edema often results from left ventricular heart failure because obviously the blood is going back to the left side of the heart. In babies, heart failure is less common, but there are other things that can cause that sort of buildup. So for example, if you have a third degree block, so a bad block and the heart isn't just pumping well enough. If you have a cardiac tamponade, so you have a lot of fluid building up in the pericardial space, that will prevent blood from returning to the heart. If you have a big myxoma in the heart, then that could also prevent blood from coming back. Also, if you have a congenital heart disease like total anomalous pulmonary venous return, where the vessels coming back to the heart themselves could be a little bit obstructed. All of those things will result in increased buildup of pressure of the blood in the lungs and therefore seepage into the alveoloid space. So how do we diagnose pulmonary edema? Obviously, at some point you're probably gonna get an x-ray when you see the baby working harder to breathe and maybe on the vent that compliance and their resistance changes. So you get an x-ray and it could be anything from just a little bit of increased interstitial infiltrates where you can just tell that all the blood vessels are kind of filled with fluid to a complete whiteout, where basically all the alveoli are now filled with fluid and you've got massive hypoexpansion. So really lots of different x-ray results depending on what's causing the pulmonary edema in the first place. And then what about the treatment? Just like everything else in neonatology, everything else in medicine, you have to take care of two things. The first one is figuring out what the underlying cause of the pulmonary edema is. So if it's a PDA, then maybe the baby will need indocin or surgery, or you just have to wait it out. If it's a TAPVR, then obviously the baby's gonna need heart surgery. If it's fluid overload, then you have to encourage the baby to get the fluid off, whether it's dialysis or whether it's getting the baby to pee more. So the first thing is take care of the underlying disease. The second thing is support the baby while 
the underlying disease is being taken care of. So whether that's increased event settings, increase the oxygenation, change your fluid balance, whatever else you have to do to keep the baby oxygenating and ventilating adequately while you're treating the underlying disease. I hope you learned something today. Please like and subscribe and remember to comment below about future topics you'd like me to talk about. Thank you. Hey.